Hey everybody, welcome to a new video. So by now, you know that I like outboard gear. I've got a bit of a collection, and one of my favorite pieces is my Neve MBP Master Bus Processor. It sits on the two bus forever. I've already made a video about it. What if you could get one for $8? Now, this video is not sponsored. I keep seeing this company's ads pop up on Facebook and I wanted to give it a try. Axis Analog, they have a lot of really cool gear and you can basically put a plug-in in, in your DAW. It'll work with any DAW. And essentially you can run your mix or certain channels through this gear. I happen to have one of the pieces of gear they use. They were advertising to me a Neve Master Bus processor and I have one. So I want to see if I can set both units exactly the same because you should be able to do that. How different does it sound? Does it sound different at all? If not, this could be a really cheap way for people who using mainly laptops on very mobile rigs if they could also be using legendary gear without having to house the racks the heavy duty converters and worry about all that stuff on the back end you would just need your laptop and an internet connection and you could be using legendary gear i want to see how accurate that is how it works if the workflow makes sense to be clear, this is not sponsored in any way. They do not know I'm making this video. I'm not sure they would want that or even ask for it. <laughs> so here we are in Pro Tools. I've got my Neve down here so you can see what I'm doing. When my time starts here, we can pull that up, match these settings, and then see what we're working with. But first, my general process when working with outboard, if I'm gonna switch things up, is to send a signal generator through it to make sure the left and the right are as close as possible. Even though we're using compressors on the stereo bus, I don't like the detector to be linked. I personally like when those are separated. It's also important to note that this setting on my Neve is not necessarily right for this song. This is what I was working on for a song that I'm currently mastering that is not this one. So this isn't a mastering tutorial by any means. This is to see how close access analog gets to an actual unit because I happen to have the same one. And then we're also going to test the back end for the converters. So just to show you what's going on, here is the session with me going. We're gonna get weird latency things happening because I have analog matrix on, which is working through the internet. So it's introducing a lot of latency on my two bus. Add multifunction reserved, there it is. So I'm gonna make mine inactive on the bus and I'm real quick gonna look down at my unit and match the settings as close as I can. So generally there. There's really, I mean, these are stepped controls in real life. They're not really stepped here, or if they are, I don't really know the feel of the detent. So I'm getting it as close as I can. Let's turn the limiter off. Let's turn all these on. We're on feedback for right now. Threshold around minus eight. Two to one. Texture all the way up on blue. For that song, it felt right. Mix all the way up. And our gain is somewhere around here. Again, I'm doing this as close as I can. What we can do is send a signal generator through this. I do this with normal onboard anyways. So this will help me determine if I've generally set these two sides up together because I do not have them linked. If I hit this, the detector is linked and it'll treat the left and the right the same. I don't really want that uh, for this particular one. So let's turn the signal generator on. This is gonna be annoying. That's pretty darn close, so let's see if it's the gain that's messed up. And even with my background with this piece, it's, it's a little difficult to match exactly, and sometimes the detector, you bump it. 
and it'll get closer. Just making sure everything is as close as it can be. Turning off and turning on things to see if I can find where the issue lies or if it's even really an issue. All right, and for fun, let's check mine. Mine is off just a little bit. I mean, that's dealing in minutia right there. Oh, it resets you. Dang it, you gotta reconnect if you make it inactive. So I'm gonna try to remember to just bypass this for this test. How are we doing on time? Five minutes, okay. It kept all of my stuff. That's good. Turn the signal generator off. Turn this on and let's hear what this thing sounds like. First, let's listen to mine. Okay, and then we're gonna listen to theirs. And if you want to keep an eye here on the screen, you'll see me make the MVP inactive and then unbypass the analog matrix. So this is the theirs. I'm gonna work this limiter about where I normally have it. Um, and then later we're gonna test the converters here. Because it's one thing to have good gear, it's another thing to, what kind of converters are we pushing into? So let's set this limiter here at about noon. Let's take a look at theirs and then we'll switch to mine. Let's go to mine. I'm interested to see how difference in the loudness feels different, at least to me here. Let's tr let's see where mine sits and then we'll see where theirs sits. So generally minus 13.1 as far as that goes. Uh, and this could be a difference of converters and how they're calibrated. Um, I am going to adjust this a little bit. I'm assuming this is input and output. So let's push out of it a little harder to make it match. I gotta say right off the bat, I'm surprised how close they are. I didn't expect that. This feels like mine. Um, one thing I wanna check, let's push the stereo spread. That may give away something about the converters that we can then test. So let's just goose that on both. So here is theirs. Okay, and then mine. Okay, that to me does not sound the same.
That's interesting. It doesn't feel like the width knob is working. Okay, so I can get the left and the right to react, but I don't think this width knob is working. Because again, listen to mine. Those are not the same thing. Uh, let's check the depth then. I'm wondering if SFE is just not working. Uh, so let's set that to zero, max this out. Essentially all that's doing is taking like a high, a high mid frequency and like pushing it into the center. Let's see if there's, we'll do the same thing. I keep making it inactive. That's a bummer. Connect. I don't want it in mid side. Making it inactive. Something about the SFE does not sit right with me, uh, but I mean, that is okay. Although some of the magic in this box is with the SF, like having that, having that stereo field at your fingertips is super helpful. So let's set this generally back to where I would normally have it. Now I wanna find out about the converters on this thing. It's one thing to have good gear, it's another thing to know what converters you're really slamming with it. Because with mine, I can show you how hard I can press into this to get like a general master. As I do this, check out the limiter right here. I'm not really doing anything, the threshold's not set. The ceiling is set a little further back so that I'm I'm trying to mitigate whatever YouTube's gonna do to this. But let's take a look at the short term here and that's gonna tell us general loudness and how hard we can push into converters before they start to fart out. And for this test, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and link channel A so we kinda get rid of some variables. So whatever we do on the left side of this is gonna affect the right side, so it's a little easier to make a comparison. I did notice the bypass all button that's on mine is not on this unit, and that is interesting. We have 15 minutes left. Let's get back to work here. I did notice the camera for my Neve shut off. I don't know when that happened. I'll try to keep an eye on it. So let's just push into this quite a bit, about right here. Set mine about the same. And let's take a listen to theirs. We have to turn the limiter off for this. And this will allow us to get past the limiter, hit whatever converters we're hitting hard. Let's take a listen to mine. And we're redlining both of these units pretty hard. Um, I do think my burls are breaking up a little sweeter. Let's push it even harder and see where it starts to fall apart. Uh, let's take a listen to theirs. Now right about there, distortion is starting to get gross. Um, so let's take a look at mine. I'm gonna reach over here and push that.
So right there, I like the way mine is pushing in. I def I tried to get it to a place where it was gross and it can get there, but it's a different kind of gross. And that's, that's a difference of converters, not necessarily a difference of the units involved. So now let's do the same with theirs. I'm definitely leery to push that hard because whatever's on the back end of these feels, I, I don't know if it's the conversion going, I mean, we are lossless, uh, 48 kilohertz, 24 bit. So I don't know if that's uh, an Apple lossless uh, or what type of file that is, but I'm not sure if it's the conversion in the internet going or coming back, a mix of both, or if it's the converters that are actually hooked up to this thing, because don't forget, we have converters that have to come out into this device and then back in and then encoded back to me. So there's a lot of conversion happening here on different levels. I will say it's not bad. Yeah, even engaging the limiter just a little bit on this so it's not smashing into whatever those converters are kind of gets it away from that. And then you can hear the device. But using outboard gear like this to me is the pleasure of smashing into converters after it. Uh, the compressor is the cherry on top, really. So I, I am curious why the SFE is not working. This button does not turn it on. This just sends it to the compressor, which we do not want to do. I wonder if this is gonna make a difference here. Nope, that puts it in mid-side mode, which I do not want to do. That's interesting, that because it's painfully obvious on mine. And that's part of what I love about this thing is it's insanely 3D. Now I'm being crazy nitpicky here, but let's be realistic for a hot second. This is a really cool way to check out gear. I mean, I have one here. There could be something wrong with that unit. There could be something wrong with that encoder. That's the bummer here uh, as far as that width knob goes, because that is like 99% of the cool factor of this unit. And I don't know why it's not reacting the way I know it to react. However, I think I'm gonna use this service more because there are pieces that they have listed on there that I've been curious to purchase for the studio myself. And that could be a really cool way to kind of get the flavor. I don't think this is, this wouldn't replace using this for me unless I was really, really in a pinch. Cause this is not how I use the gear. The gear is one thing. Being able to know how hard you can push out of it into converters is that's the world to me. So I think that's the only piece really missing here. That said, this is a really cool service. And if you want to try your hand with some analog gear and see if it works for your workflow, this is kind of an interesting little introduction or a little handshake. It's eight bucks for half an hour to see if you dig something on there. And if you do, you could rent out the studio close to you that might have something like that and really get it printed on there in, in a more surgical way. But this is a cool way to find out like what those sounds are. What does a Neve sound like? What does an SSL sound like? You could, you could play with all of that stuff. Or what does a distressor sound like on Nuke on my drum rooms? You can play with that, which I think was free on their site. Again, this sounds like a sponsored video from them, but they, they don't even know I'm making this video and I'm not sure they would want me to. I will say if that width knob worked like I know it to work, it would be scary. Like this would be close. So I imagine there's something wrong with that knob because everything else was working just fine. And that, I don't know if that's the servo that they have controlling that knob 
if the knob got who knows any number of things could happen that is the bummer about using a service like this and you don't know because if that was your only experience with an Eve MVP, you might think it's just another compressor. Whereas some mixes and masters I've done, that width knob is the magic on a master for me. All in all, this is very cool. Really interesting way to incorporate outboard into your workflow. If you guys wanna see more stuff like this, hit the like button. If you dig what we're doing, subscribe, hit the bell to be notified when I put out a video. I'm Resident Loser Jeremy. I'll see you in the next one.